Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn. Today we will explore the physical layer in the computer network. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Imagine you are sending a message to a friend across the globe. You type it out, hit send and within seconds your friend receives it. Have you ever wondered how this magic happens? This seamless communication is all thanks to the physical layer in the computer networks. According to Cisco, global internet traffic reached an astounding 79 zettabytes. That's 79 trillion gigabytes of data flying around the world, facilitated by the intricate workings of the physical layer. The physical layer is the bedrock of any computer network, responsible for converting digital data into signals that can travel through various media like copper wires, fiber optics or radio waves. Think of it as the road system for your data, ensuring that your message navigates the vast digital landscape efficiently and arrives at its destination intact. So in this video, we will uncover the fascinating details of the physical layer, exploring how it makes modern communications possible, get ready to dive into the world of bits, signals and cables and discover the hidden infrastructure that powers our digital lives. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. And before commencing, guys, just a quick info for you. If you are an aspiring cybersecurity professional looking for online training and certification from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts to enhance your credibility, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity from MIT University in collaboration with EC Council should be your right choice. For more details, use the link in the description box and pin comment. And if these are the types of videos you would like to watch, then hit the subscribe button, like and press on the bell icon to never miss on future content. So let's get started. So first have an introduction to computer networks. So a computer network is a collection of interconnected devices that can share data and resources. And these networks enable communication between devices, allowing users to send emails, browse the web and share files. Think of a computer network as a city's transportation system. Just like roads allow cars, buses and bikes to travel from one place to another, a network allows computers to send information back and forth. These could be emails, web pages, video calls, just about any data you can think of. Networks can be small like a network in your home connecting your family's devices or incredibly vast like the internet which connects millions of commuters worldwide. So this was about the computer networks. Now we'll have an overview of the OSI model. So the OSI model, that is Open Systems Interconnection Model, is a conceptual framework used to understand network interaction in seven layers. So each layer has a specific role, like a team in a company where every department handles a different aspect of the business. Number one is physical layer. This is like the ground or roads in your city analogy. It deals with the literal physical components of the network like cables, radio signals and ethernets. It's concerned with transmitting raw bits over a physical data link connecting network nodes. Then comes data link layer. Imagine this as traffic management systems that organize data flow so that bits can find a way without crashing into each other. It provides node to node data transfer. A link between two directly connected nodes. It also handles error correction from the physical layer. Then comes the network layer, that is layer 3. This is like the navigation system that finds the best path for data to travel across networks. It determines the physical path the data should take based on network conditions, priority of service and other factors. Then comes transport layer, that is layer 4. Consider this as the delivery service that ensures that the entire message arrives intact and in order, making sure the data is error free and complete. It's essential for managing and maintaining data flows between hosts. Then comes the session layer, that is layer 5. This layer sets up, manages and ends connections between application. It's like a conductor who starts and stops the orchestra's performance at the right time. Then comes the presentation layer, layer 6. Think of this as the translator that converts the data from a format the network understands to a format the application can use. It's like someone translating a foreign movie into your language. And then comes the application layer, that is layer 7. This is the top layer where application access network services. 
This layer represents the data and services that most users interact with like emails, web browsers and other applications. So this was all about the OSI model. So let's see an example. Imagine Alice, there's a person Alice who sends a letter to Bob and Alice writes her letter that is application layer, puts it in an envelope that is presentation layer and goes to a post office to mail it that is session layer. And the post office decides which truck route will be the fastest for the letter to reach Bob City, that is transport layer. And once on the road, the letter is sorted with others headed in the same direction, that is network layer. Then physically moved across the country in trucks and planes, that is data link layer. Finally, the letter is delivered to Bob's mailbox, that is physical layer. So this journey from Alice to Bob illustrates how data travels through the layers in the OSI model. So this was about the OSI model. Now moving to the physical layer and we'll see the importance of physical layer. So the physical layer is the first and the lowest layer in the OSI model of computer networking. It is fundamentally responsible for the raw transmission and reception of unstructured data streams over a physical medium. It connects the hardware devices like computers, routers, switches to the transmission media such as cables or air in the case of wireless. This layer is crucial because it serves as the gateway between the data that networks work with and the physical means by which the data travels. So let's understand this with the help of an example. Imagine you are sending a text message to a friend. When you hit send, your phone converts the message into electrical signals. So this is the example here. So when you hit the send, your phone converts the message into electrical signals that travel through cables, satellites and wireless networks to reach your friend's phone where it is converted back into readable data. This seamless process is thanks to the physical layer. Now that we have understood or introduced the physical layer and its role in the OSI model, let's dive deeper into the specific functions it performs. So understanding these functions will help you grasp how the physical layer ensures smooth and reliable data transmission across networks. So let's start with the functions of the physical layer. Number one is data encoding and signal transmission. So the physical layer converts data into signals that can transmit over physical media like cables or airwaves. This process is called encoding. The signals can be electrical, optical or radio waves depending on the transmission medium. Example, think of encoding as translating a message into Morse code. The message, that is data, is encoded into dots and dashes, that is signals, that travel through a telegraph wire, that is transmission medium. So this was the example. Now moving to the next function that is bit synchronization and rate control. So bit synchronization ensures that the sender and receiver are aligned in time. So the data bits are correctly interpreted. Rate control manages the speed at which data is sent to prevent congestion and ensure efficient transmission. For example, imagine two people talking over a walkie talkie. They need to speak at the same pace that is rate control and wait for the over signal before responding, that is synchronization. So this is the example for this function. Now moving to the next example, that is physical topology management. So the physical layer determines the layout of devices and connections in a network known as topology. Common topologies include bus, star, ring and mesh. So let's understand this with an example. So think of network topology like a city map the layout of roads and intersections that is network topology determines how vehicles that is data travel between locations that is devices so now coming to the fourth function that is interface with transmission media so the physical layer interfaces with the actual transmission media example cables fiber optics wireless to send and receive signals and ensures the proper connection and interaction between devices and media for example, consider plugging a USB drive into a computer. The USB port, that is physical layer, enables the driver to communicate with the computer by providing the physical connection. So this was about the functions of physical layer. Now that we have understand the functions of the physical layer, let's explore the types of transmission media it uses to send and receive data. So transmission media can broadly categorized into wired and wireless media. So let's start with wired media. So number one in wired media is twisted pair cables. So these are pairs of insulated copper wires twisted together to reduce interference. Example, they are used in telephone lines and ethernet cables. 
Then comes coaxial cables. So these consist of a central conductor, insulating layer, metallic shield and outer cover. They are less susceptible to interference. For example, they are commonly used in cable television networks. And then comes fire optics. So these are light signals to transmit data through strands of glass or plastic, offering high speed and low signal loss. Example, they are used in high speed internet connections and long distance communication. Then comes wireless media. And in wireless media, number one is radio waves. So these use electromagnetic waves for data transmission or long distances without physical connectors. For example, they are used in Wi-Fi, AM or FM radio and mobile communications. Then comes microwaves. So these are highly frequency radio waves that provide high speed communication or long distances. For example, they are used in satellite communications and point to point links. And then comes infrared. So these are infrared light for short range communication, typically within a line of sight. For example, used in remote controls and short distance data links. So these transmission media are the physical paths that connect devices in a network, enabling the flow of data across the globe. So after learning about the types of transmission media, it's essential to understand how data is transmitted or these media. So we'll have a look at the signal transmission. So number one signal transmission is analog signals. So analog signals are continuous waves that vary in amplitude and frequency. For example, think of a traditional AM or FM radio where the sound is carried by varying wave patterns. Then comes digital signals. So digital signals are discrete with two states, high that is one and low that is zero. For example, imagine how a computer processes information using binary code that is ones and zeros. Then comes modulation methods. And in that we have amplitude modulation. So that varies the amplitude of the carrier wave to encode data. For example, used in AM radio broadcasting. And then comes the FM, that is frequency modulation. That varies the frequency of the carrier wave to encode data. The example is, that is common in FM radio broadcasting. And then comes phase modulation. So that varies the phase of the carrier wave to encode data. And the example is, it is used in digital data transmission and some radio communication systems. And then comes the number third, that is baseband and broadband transmission. So baseband transmission is that transmits data over a single channel using the entire bandwidth of the medium. For example, Ethernet networks use baseband transmission. And when we come to broadband transmission, that transmits data over multiple channels dividing the bandwidth into separate frequencies. Example is cable TV and internet services, they use broadband transmission. Now that we have covered signal transmission techniques, now we know about the physical layer. And with that guys, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you find it useful, please like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubts, comment down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.